their mixed media frenzy YouTube hop. So this is a hop being put on by the ladies over at mixed media frenzy. They do a scrapbooking series and then they also have a Facebook page and it's just tons of fun. They're, they're just a group of ladies that are encouraging us to pull out our paints and our, our pastes and all that fun stuff that uh, we like to do with mixed media and and use it and create gorgeous layouts. So this hop was designed to um, create something that is, you know, maybe saying goodbye to 2020 and hello to 2021 or however you want to interpret it uh, in, a, you know, a new year's sense and just have some fun creating some mixed media. So I kind of wanted to do originally I actually thought I would do something on a black background and then I thought no I want to use a white background and play with darker colors and do some some um paint smushing techniques with darker colors I do often use darker colors kind of as a as a little highlight color it just you know especially black will often just really make your lighter colors or your brighter colors pop and so I do pull black into my my layouts um, maybe I'll do a little you know splattering with some black or something like that but I don't often do large chunks of dark dark colors and so I've been seeing it a lot lately on Instagram and Pinterest these beautiful watercolor uh, smushings is what I'm going to call them I don't know what the technical term is but just these beautiful kind of um, dark splotches of colors that that people are using and so I really wanted to play around with that so I pulled out my white piece of paper and I've got two of my watercolor sets here. I just kind of, I combine them because the one set is, um, I wouldn't say it's more chalky. It's just a little bit more opaque. It has a little, a slight kind of, um, gouache-ness to it, I guess you could say. And then the Jane Davenport one is just a really kind of pretty, um, very tran translucent standard watercolor. So it layers really nicely and it kind of mixes really nicely. But I wanted to have some of that really dark, dark black to kind of um, just play around and see what I could do with these really dark colors. So that's why I thought to pull out both of them. And you can see I am, I'm mixing both of them. I'm using um, a really dark navy blue from the Jane Davenport palette and a little bit of purple and a little tiny touch of pink. I didn't want this to suddenly feel like it was galaxy in any way. I just wanted to have um, just a, a touch of something a little bit brighter that kind of draws your eye around the page. Um, so I'm just making these little sections in a very, very loose grid uh, pattern and kind of splotching these colors down. I'm letting them mix. I'm letting the colors pool in certain places. And I just think they turn out so gorgeous. Uh, and my plan is to use that piece of acetate, which is actually a cut apart acetate. It has cards on it and I think I bought it, um, oh gosh, probably like five years ago. I think I bought it obviously with the intention of using it in Project Life, maybe as some layovers, but I've not, I haven't touched it. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to pull this out. I think it's kind of fun. It has a pretty rose gold to it. It has a, a sort of celebratory feel to it. And a lot of the cards I thought kind of worked for a new year because there's a countdown feel to it and stuff like that. And so I'm going to use it as one sheet, just like that. So I didn't want my mixed media to line up perfectly with each card. I, I don't want your eye to kind of look at it and think that this is a Project Life page, but I did want some mixed media in a almost... Um, Pa almost the same pattern, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. I just liked these blotches. I just didn't want everything to line up perfectly. So I kind of put my colors down. Then I grab that piece of acetate and take a look. Um, I was sort of just looking for the words to see if 
the words were standing out against the the background and the colors and where I might need to add a little bit more black or a little bit more blue. Um, so yeah, it was just really fun to kind of play around and and you can see here I don't really have any um, plan or technique and you know some of my little splotches are messier than other splotches. I just really enjoyed that whole process and kind of watching as the paint started to dry and those blacks and the blues kind of transformed and it's I think it's really pretty. I definitely want to play with this a little bit more and do maybe like a big bold black smush right in the middle of a page <laughs> um, and then to kind of bring in that idea of it being festive and to celebrate I sprinkled a bunch of gold all over it just gives these cute little pops of shimmer and stuff like that uh, and that's just with my Heidi Swap color shine in gold so while my background dries, I'm going to go ahead and work on my photos and just work on this top piece. And actually, this turned out good. I didn't do this intentionally, but I always just try to find a way to be working on something while my mixed media is drying. And so in this case, it works out really well because when I put things on top of this acetate and then I can flip it over to put adhesive on in order to, to attach it to the background, all the things that I've put on top of it give me a good place for my adhesive to go so that nothing is is showing through. So um, tip there that <laughs> I probably should have just known and I should tell you that I totally planned for it, but um, I didn't. But, you know, good tip <laughs> to keep in mind when you're working with acetate. So I'm, I've put my pictures onto that piece of vellum that has gold words on it and I felt like they just weren't standing out enough so I'm going to go ahead and back them on some black cardstock and then put them onto that piece of vellum. I just kind of liked how the vellum gives a little bit of opacity and a different texture so everything isn't all going to just be really shiny and glossy. I wanted to have some different just some different textures. And when you put that around the picture, then your eye naturally wants to go there first. And so that's how you kind of bring attention back to the, the things that matter in your layout. And obviously, these pictures are, are not the best, if that makes sense. Um, they're kind of busy, and they're not the best quality. And so they could get lost in the layout, but by putting putting these mats around them and putting a little bit of different texture around them, it's going to help to keep bringing your eye back to them. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I don't put them lined up perfectly with any of the cards that you see. So if you were just looking at that piece of acetate, your eye kind of wants to follow each individual card, especially as scrapbookers, because we know that this was probably meant to be cut apart. And so we read it that way. Um, and I didn't want this to look like it was a like cheater project life where I just took all the cards, kept them together and created a project life layout. I really wanted this to have a more organic feel with just having that fun kind of, um, you know, different detailed background, but as a background. So I really wanted my photos to not line up. I wanted them to be off, just off slightly. And uh, that, again, will make sure that you're you're looking at them first, your eye is drawn to them first. And then I went into my embellishments and I have all these numbers from my mind's eye. It's It was this big pack of gold embellishments that I got from, I think, Winners or Home Sense um, from my mind's eye. And I keep them all together in this iris container with all my other little gold embellishments and I remembered that I had numbers and so I kind of created a bit of a countdown which is obviously a very New Year's theme and and has a New Year's feel to it and I really made sure that none of them lined up perfectly and I kind of placed them all around the words so I didn't want to cover any words up but I I really intentionally wanted to make sure that it didn't give you that grid feel and that your eye would suddenly start to fall Follow everything in line if that makes sense. So I pulled out the numbers 
one through nine and had this idea to kind of create that countdown feel. And then I also pulled out some circles and some hearts. There's the one square that says party animals that has just that really big, bold, round, gold um, center to it. And so I wanted to kind of repeat that in a few other places. And I thought all these little hearts come from different collections and different manufacturers. So it's kind of fun to bring in different textures and different uh, shades of, of gold. So it just adds a lot to a layout that otherwise probably would have looked pretty flat. And I just tucked them in around all of the words that were in the background on that piece of acetate. I didn't want to cover anything up, but I also didn't want everything again to line up. I really wanted it to look like the acetate is just extra interest in the background and not necessarily the structure of the layout. Uh, and then to finish it all off, I threw on some really fun sequins there from Spiegel Mom Scraps. It's actually a New Year's mix that she's put together. So it just added this really fun kind of festive feel. And that's it. That's my layout. This was so much fun to put together because I didn't really know what the plan was going to be. So it was just a lot of playing around and seeing what worked. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please check out all the links below for everybody else celebrating. And until next time, happy scrapping. Bye.